All right, let's go for take two on this because I didn't realize my camera had overheated um, filming the 4K of this. So uh, this is the adapter update for March 2025. Here we have uh, two adapters and some other stuff that we'll be talking about. Uh, so let's zoom in a bit closer. First of all, disclaimers. Uh, this is a RA adapter, the body is. Um, I do not make this um, RA adapter body. This is not mine. <laughs> I have no affiliation with RA. Um, I just happened to buy one of their adapters and have modified it uh, to work better for um, our needs. And this is um, the adapter I have been spending a lot of time on. Um, this front section is a black magic part. It's the black magic B4 optical mount. And then this rear section is um, what I've made to adapt it to, in this case, E mount, Sony E mount. So um, none of these companies have any affiliation with me. They probably have no idea I'm making these things. They just happen to have some very useful parts that can be modified and adapted uh, for other uses. In the case of the black magic part, it's a very high quality uh, optical correcting element in there. In terms of the RA adapter, um, it comes with a 1.4 times teleconverter in this case, but that was not corrected um, from my testing. It was still just as hazy as using a um, basic adapter, but um, the build quality of the actual chassis of the adapter is really well done and for the price, fantastic value for money for the chassis of the adapter. So the quick update on this one is that it's much at the same stage as before. Um, I've been doing a lot of testing and um, work to try and make it uh, a perfectly concentric design optically. Um, that has been the trickiest thing of all. That's still ongoing, um, but I've tried a bunch of new things to do it. And I think I'm getting closer and closer, but it's like, um, you know, but it's, it's a time consuming thing to try and try and try all these different things uh, to uh, machine it so that, so things are uh, concentric as possible. But um, yeah, just cause we're in a close up here, I can show you nice and close on this one of what it looks like. This is one I've been using myself for ages. Uh, there's dust and <laughs> crap everywhere. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the 1.1 times adapter. This is pretty similar to what the end thing will probably look like. Stainless steel rear mount for E-mount. Um, and then yeah, all of that. Nice big chunky M3 hardware on this one at least. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that one. Not too much of an update on that one besides trying my best to um, find the best ways to make it reliably concentric, you know, with the design and slowly narrowing down on that. So that's that one. Now we move on to the RA one, which has had some progress and um, is, yeah, really interesting one. So the RA one initially came with this uh, 1.4 times um, teleconverter optic, which you can see is relatively thin uh, compared to the, there goes the cap, I had pre-loosened it. <laughs> um, you can see the optic is relatively small um, compared to the adapter size. And this is just a 1.4 times teleconverter in this one. Um, so because they make such a uh, great chassis for their adapter out of aluminium, I thought it'd be great to repurpose it and modify it with a black magic um, optic. So I removed this one with a lens wrench um, and then had a black magic uh, optic that, um, you know, I took apart and took the optic out. And then the optic was had a large flange and, and that sort of thing. So I machined that um, flange off and machined it down to the right size to fit in here. And then I made a coupling adapter that went around the optic and had the threads that are internal to this. Um, so 
yeah, I've basically put the Blackmagic Optic inside here and it works really well. Um, I wasn't expecting it to work so well actually, um, but yeah, here it is. Um, and you can see the optic there. And then as we turn on the side, you can see just how massive the <laughs> Blackmagic B4 corrective optic is. Um, so this original one sat up the front here, sort of like that. And yeah, there we go, get the angle right. It's hard doing this on camera. So it was like sitting up there and it was well and truly housed within the metal of the adapter up to sort of this point. Um, that was where the original adapter stopped. And then the Blackmagic B4 optic is this bit and it's sticking way out the back. So it's, it's much longer than the original um, optic that the RA adapter used. And here is the section um, that I've machined and threaded so that it can screw into the adapter and be adjustable, uh, screw in and out if you need to do slight adjustments um, for um, adjusting the adapter's back focus. So you don't need to shim the adapter or anything like that. You can actually adapt, uh, you can actually adjust the back focus by undoing three grub screws as was the original one as well. And then screwing this in and out by the threads slightly. Um, and yeah, I could adjust it so that I got the uh, back focus marker directly on the FB marker as well. So perfectly back focused um, in terms of the range, like perfectly centered in the range of the back focus. And then with hot and cold weather and expansion of everything, you can adjust within that whole range instead of being limited to somewhere else in the range. So this actually turned out really well. Um, I was surprised that I could make that work as well as I did. And I've been using this one for a while um, and yeah, it's performing really well, um, as well as the this one. Um, there's no difference in the optical elements. Um, it's just that this one goes from B4 to E-mount, and this one goes from B4 to the PL flange here on the side. Um, and yeah, fits really well in PL mount. This is not suitable for reflex cameras. So that's cameras that use a, um, a mirror box or have uh, ND filters that may be uh, protruding into where this element is. This is definitely more for adapting with B4 PL and then PL to a mirrorless mount. That way you're safe from it protruding into the mirror box and fouling on any elements in there and um, damaging the camera. Um, I do not want anybody <laughs> to jam this in their camera and yeah, shatter the mirror box on like a old ARRI camera or on an old ARRI film camera or jam it into their ND filters. Um, so it's particularly for uh, this sort of PL to E mount uh, general uh, adapter, not this one specifically, but um, just general pass through PL adapters. It will not work with uh, PL adapters that have an optical tray like this one. Um, it will foul on that optical tray. Um, it goes way past the optical tray. Let's put that in the middle. It goes way past the optical tray and makes it basically to the E-mount flange at the back. So it won't work with um, PL adapters that have optics in them. So a basic pass-through PL adapter and this one will uh, marry up really well and work really well. I've put some felt around the back because there's a large cylindrical uh, flat piece of aluminium. There's a large cylindrical piece of aluminium and I thought why not um, put some felt there to absorb any stray light. Uh, we don't want any internal reflections. And yeah, um, I've been using it for a while so this one is um, basically a used copy. So for people who are wanting a uh, B4 to PL option that is optically corrected, uh, this could be a good option for them. It's, it's not going to be as cheap as this uh, because obviously you're buying this optic and then you're buying the RA adapter, removing the optic and then putting the B4 optic inside the RA body. So you're buying two things instead of just buying um, one uh, black magic optic and adapting that. 
Uh, so it's a more expensive option, but PL is definitely more flexible with different cameras. So yeah, that's the updates on this one. It exceeded my expectations modifying it. Um, and I'm glad I was able to put new life into this uh, RA adapter that I otherwise wouldn't have used. So yeah, that is that. Um, because it's been used and it's really just a prototype sort of thing, um, it is sort of what it is, um, but it performs really well. Um, but in saying that, similar uh, things with the other um, adapter is um, getting perfect centering is difficult and it's difficult to narrow that down to whether the lens is um, slightly flexing the whole camera system or if it's sunk in the adapter. Um, this was turned on a lathe so the, um, the parts that are in it are perfectly concentric. It's sort of microns of <laughs> levels of uh, precision that you need to go down to to get a perfectly concentric adapter. The, other, uh, the last thing to note with this one is that because it protrudes so far, um, you need a very long PL cap because as you can see, it, um, there we go, it uh, goes really to the end of this extra long PL cap and short PL caps uh, only sort of come to here. No way that's gonna fit. So yeah, there's that one. Let's put the cap back on. And yeah, that's that one. That's that one. So a little bit of note on coverage for these because a lot of new people have subscribed to the channel since I've talked about it last. Um, these are specifically for two third inch B4 lenses. So that's your Canon J series, Canon HJ series, Canon CJ series, Canon YJ series, Canon KJ series, um, FJ, basically if it's got a J in the name and it's Canon, um, it's very likely to be a two third inch lens. And then in um, the Fujinon range, it's your A, your HA, your XA, their A series is their two third inch lens. So. Those are the sorts of lenses that these are designed for. And with those lenses and uh, these modified adapters, um, the two third inch B4 lens covers a Super 16 scan mode. So if you can uh, clear image zoom into a Super 16 uh, sensor size, um, these will work um, as is nothing else uh, to do. And that's, um, and that's going to get you really nice quality of image, uh, minimal light loss with a minimal expansion. But then for people who want to use it at sort of more of a super 35 image size, um, you can use a lens with a doubler and engage the doubler on the lens in conjunction with one of these adapters. And that will cover approximately 98% of a super 35 um, sensor size. So there'll be a tiny bit of vignetting on the sides, but if you're using the um, camera in Super 35 4K, um, cropping off those little edges still leaves you with way more than a uh, 1080p image. So um, that's an option as well. And using it in 35 with the doubler is a good option for Super 35 uh, coverage and nearly covering that full sensor. Um, and if you have a Super 35 camera, uh, like the A6600 that I'm filming on here, I can actually crop in uh, with clear and zoom two times and get full sensor coverage uh, with just the 1.1 times optic in here, no need for the doubler. Or I can uh, throw in the doubler and get the nearly full uh, Super 35 sensor coverage. These are not suitable for covering full frame uh, cameras and I have not been able to test them uh, on micro four thirds size sensors, only Super 16 and Super 35. I don't have a micro four thirds sensor camera to uh, test micro four thirds on. So yeah, that's the update and a little bit more information about them for all the newcomers to the channel. Bit of a rambling video uh, explaining all this, um, but it's a complex uh, topic. That's a bit of an abridged version here. 
So these adapt so these customized adapters are not really made by a big corporation. They're made by me and me alone in my spare time. This is just a side project for me. Uh, so it takes a long time to get these uh, up to a level um, that I'm happy with them. For those people who uh, could not possibly wait at all, um, I can make you one of these that um, is you know, nice and strong and everything, but may not be perfectly uh, telecentric. So it'll still be par focal, still great image quality, uh, but um, the telecentricity may be like, you know, five microns off or something. Um, and yeah, I, c I can make you one of those. Um, if you're desperate to have one uh, ASAP, but in terms of um, when the official uh, adapters will be available. It's still a little while off while I fix um, that telecentricity. What the telecentricity is, is basically um, making the whole adapter concentric front to back. And if it's off by like the tiniest amount, um, when you do a crash zoom in to a single point, um, it will sort of, instead of going directly straight crash zoom, it'll go off by like a degree, off by like a degree, like the same degree. Um, yeah, so um, it can just mean your crash zooms are not perfectly straight. So like, this is a perfectly straight crash zoom. Everything that is in the center stays in the center. Whereas it might be instead of, let's just say that's the center, it's not, but let's just say that's the center. Instead of it being there, a non-telecentric zoom might be like, and then the center will actually be over here instead of there. So it'll feel like that, like a slight tiny bit of movement. So um, yeah, that's sort of the problem I'm trying to fix at the moment um, with the V2. Putting timelines on these sorts of things is hard because the challenges uh, with the actual project are really minute and fine finessing challenges that I'm trying to adjust. So, but yeah, it's it's that final 1% uh, of the project that I'm working on uh, to sort out. And then once that's sorted out, it will basically be um, available. But yeah, that probably won't be for a while because it is taking an enormous amount more time than I thought it would. Like even turning and finishing parts on the lathe in a very telecentric way um, gets us much closer and that's what these are. But um, yeah, certain uh, professional people need perfection and we're not quite at that perfection yet. Hobbyists would be absolutely happy with this sort of thing and like I, I use them all the time um, and because I don't do sort of crash zooms mid, uh, mid recording um, it's and I'm sort of always panning with sport or, or something like that. Um, it's not really an issue for me, but um, yeah, some people need that absolutely perfect uh, telecentric uh, crash zoom. That's the March update for 2025. Um, that's all I got to say. See you next time.